Hello and welcome to the third video in this linked list series for beginners programming in C. So in this video what we're going to do is we're going to take some user input. We're going to add people to our list according to the user input. So the user is going to enter just the age just to keep things short and sweet. And each time the user inputs an age a new person will be created and added to our list and we'll our linked list will grow dynamically. Before I go into an explanation of exactly how that's going to work, I just want to make a couple of changes in the code. There's one very, very important one to make inside this get new person. Um, now in the last couple of videos, I wanted to keep things as simple as possible with the introduction, especially if you're new to dynamic memory allocation with uh, malloc. But there is one critical thing you should always do when you do a call to malloc, and that is check whether actually the pointer that is returned from malloc is null or not because malloc isn't always guaranteed to be able to allocate the memory. So to defend against this, it's actually quite easy. We just simply will ask, uh, is a new person non-null? If so, then create our person. Otherwise, let's print a nasty message saying uh, there's some, something gone very, very wrong and we've got a failure in the memory allocation. So I'll just write then if a new person is not equal to null. then we can have the same code as always just inside here. Otherwise, we'll print a nasty error message to the screen saying there's been a failure with the memory allocation. And when we've got this failure, we'll be returning the new person will be null because it's null at the start here, and it's null also then from the memory allocation. And we'll deal with that null then inside the main function uh, when it's returned like that. But now we're at least guarding against the null pointer that's returned from malloc when we fail to allocate the memory. Next thing I'd like to do is inside main then is just delete all of the code that's inside there apart from the first two pointers and change the name of second to added. Right then, so how's this going to work? I'm going to explain this uh, much like I did in the previous couple of videos, um, more from a concept point of view with some example code and then relatively quickly actually put the code in because that's the easiest way I've found of doing these explanations. I tend to tie myself in knots a bit trying to explain what's going on with the code rather than having it laid out like this. So let's say we're starting with an empty list. I'm going, oh, I'm going to make the assumption that this is the last slide of the last video that you've understood this, that we use the next in line pointer to point to a certain address, which is um, either null or the uh, a newly allocated uh, space in the memory for another person. And that's then our link in our linked list. Um, if that's not clear, then please go back and watch the previous video or put a comment below the video or something like this um, because it's really, really important to understand this linking together like this. This is a concept that's going to be uh, used a lot now as we add more and more elements to our list. So when the pro program first starts, we've got the first pointer and the added pointer both pointing to null. Now the first pointer will always point to the first element on our list or null if the list is empty. We will use added to assign the next in line pointer of the last element on our list to our newly allocated person that we're adding to our list. So the way we'll add items then, let's imagine we're starting from an empty list. Well, first of all, we'll ask is first equal to null. If it is, then we should point first to a new, the address of a newly allocated person. So first is equal to get new person. And what we'll then do is check if first is not equal to null. So if we haven't had a problem allocated the memory, first will not be equal to null. And then we can point added equal to first. Broken down, how does that look? Let's say we create A, which is our new person with a particular age. First will be pointing to A and the next in line pointer of the A structure will be pointing to null. And then we also point added to A if we've managed to allocate the memory, otherwise added would stay pointing to null. So what we end up with then is one element on our list and the first and added both pointing to that element and that element is element A. So now we want to add another element and let's say we're going to add uh, person B to our list. Well in our logic first is no longer null so we're going to need to do something else and we can see at the bottom of the code block here just in red outline what we're going to do is allocate a new person, this will be person B and we'll set added's next in line pointer to point to the address of where this person was allocated. Now remember added is pointing to A, so effectively we're saying the next A's next in line will point to B. 
And as you can see, this builds our link. We've now got two elements linked by the next in line pointer of A. And added is still pointing to A. So what we do then is we say that we'll now set added to point to the address of the next in line pointer of added, or in other words, point to A's next where A's next in line is pointing, which is to B. So now added is being set to point to B. And now we create a third person which is C. First is still non-null, obviously, and we allocate a new person again, and added's next in line will point to that place in their memory. Now added is pointing to B, so B's next in line will now be pointing to C, and C's next in line will be null. And then again, we call exactly the same code again. Added is equal to added's next in line, so added is pointing to B, added's next in line is point a uh, B's next in line is pointing to C, so now we set added pointing to C, and so on. If we added D, E, F, and so on, added would move down the chain and already be always be pointing to the last element on the list. So that's how we use added then to dynamically add elements to our list. There's one more quick thing we need to understand, and that's called traversing the list. So to be able to print it, to be able to walk through the list, and we have our list here. And I guess you can imagine already how this is going to be done. Uh, first is pointing to A, and A's next in line is pointing to B, and B's next in line is pointing to C, and C's next in line is pointing to null. So what we do is we get a pointer and point that, in this case it's T, to wherever first is pointing to, which is A. And then we print the person being pointed to by T, which is A, and then we assign T to point at the address of T next in line. So T was pointing at A, now it's going to be assigned to point at whatever A's next in line is pointing at, which is B. And then we ask the question, is T null? Well in this case it's not, so we would print B, and then we would ask T to point to T's next in line, which would be C. Ask the question, is T null? Well it's not, so we would print C, and then ask T to point to C's next in line, and ask the question, is it null? Well it is, and we would then end our loop. In other words, we would use T to walk through the list until we get to the end. How does that look in code? Well, it's actually quite simple. We assign our T to a pointer. Now it says T equals list here, because we'll put this in a function, but list could be uh, the same, is the same address as first in this case. If T is null, then we haven't got anything on the list. Otherwise, whilst T is non-null, so it starts off at A is non-null, print, T and then assign T to the address of T next in line, so keep traversing through the list. And we'll use this twice in the program, one to print the list and one also to free up all the memory that's been allocated for our list. So let's drop back into the code then and start trying to put all of this in and getting it up and running. I'm just going to do a quick compile here to check everything's okay and I haven't made any errors yet. Doesn't look like it. The first thing I'd like to deal with then is actually the input from the user. So the user is going to enter some characters as a command and is also going to enter when it's a new person an age. So let's take an integer for that. And 64 characters is more than enough for the command. So what we're going to set up then, we're going to set an infinite loop up. So we're going to say while and one. So keep looping all the time unless we have a break command inside or we crash. And then we'll ask the user for a value, so we'll print to the screen, enter command or value, and then we'll use fget to get 64 characters from the standard input and have a look at this uh, value entered. What I want to be able to do then is understand what the command was. So Q will be quit, print will be print the list, and otherwise we'll try and interpret the input as an integer for the age of a person we want to add to the list. To do this I need a function for some string comparison. There is one inside the string.h library, so I'm just going to at the top add this library onto the top of the code. And now back down inside uh, main then we can start processing the commands. So the first command to process is, and I'm assuming you're slightly familiar with strcmp, but it always returns zero if the string here is the same as this. Otherwise it returns one or minus one depending on less than or greater than. Uh, in the case of zero they match and in this case that means we'll quit and we'll break out of the while loop if the user has entered Q followed by a new line. Otherwise what the user might enter is print. So in the case of print we'll want to actually print our list but we don't have a print list function yet so for now I'm just going to put in a printf and printing and nothing else. 
And otherwise, what we're going to do is we can try and use scanf to see if the user has entered a digit. And if so, then we'll scan this, or an integer, and we'll scan this into our age variable. So scanf is a standard library function. It tries to find in what's been entered in command an integer or anything inside the format specifies here. In this case, percentage d is an integer and store that value then at the address of our age integer and returns uh, non-zero if everything's worked out OK. Assuming it has worked out OK, that means we're going to be adding a person of the age that the user has entered. So now we've got all of our input set up. Let's just compile that and make sure it all works. So I'm just going to enter some ages and it seems to be OK. I'll enter, type in print and it says printing and type in Q and we quit the program. So at least the actual program uh, seems to be up and running. So the first thing to do then is to add in all of the logic that we saw inside the slides. So I'm going to, I've explained this logic in the slides, so I'm going to, to save a bit of time, paste the code in here. Um, it's been explained in the slides once and it takes me ages to type, as you know probably from my other videos. Um, so here I'm saying if first is equal to null, then get a new person, um, check whether we've managed to allocate this memory, and if we have, then set added also pointing to the same place that first is pointing. Otherwise, we'll try and allocate the next in line from added, so that will also be equal to get new person and age. And remember we're going to also ask is added uh, next in line not equal to null? If so, then we've managed to allocate the memory. So we can set added up equal to be added next in line, which makes the link to the newly allocated person on our list, as we saw on the slides. So that's the logic set up then to deal with adding things to our list. The problem is we can't see our list, and that's because we need to put a print list function into our code. So I'm going to put this print list per, um, function then just below the print person here, and it's going to take in an argument, and that one argument will be a pointer to our list. And in our case, we'll send in here, the parameter we'll send is first. So we're printing a list, we've got our pointer t set up, and we'll set t to be equal to list. Now, we might not always send first into this. We might want to print just the last couple of elements of the list. We might send the address of the second to last element on the list and then print or something like this. In our case, though, it'll always be the first element on the list. And the first thing we want to check is whether t is null or not. Because if t is null, then let's at least print something to the screen saying the list is empty. Otherwise, we'll loop that whilst t is non-null, then we'll print the particular person and then we'll set t is equal to t and next in line to go to the next person. And then remember, if the next in line is null, then t will be null and the while loop will end. So in other words, we'll print each of the people on our list. And I want to do one tiny more thing before we go and actually run the program. Um, I've talked about in the previous videos actually freeing up the memory from the pointers, and that's something that I want to do with first and added. I just want to scroll down to the bottom of main here and put first and added being equal to null, so we free those up. But before this here, we need to free up all of the memory we've allocated dynamically in our list. And to do that, I'm going to write a function called clean up. So cleanup will take a pointer to our list, and in nearly all cases I imagine it'll be the start of our list. We'll have a helper pointer called next in there, and now whilst our list pointer is pointing to something, so it'll be at the start the first element on our list, we'll get our next to point to the next element on the list, and now that that's being next is pointed to the next element on the list, what we can do is we can free up the memory allocated for what list is pointing to currently. And then we can assign list to point to next, which was the next element on the list. And now if there's nothing else on the list, then list is null, so the loop will end. Otherwise, we'll ask next to point to the next element on the list, so the third element on the list, and then free the second element, and so on. And this just walks through the list and frees up the memory we've allocated. Uh, one by one. So right down the bottom of main then, uh, above here, I just want to put clean up and first, and then we can free up all the memory that we've allocated uh, during the running of the program.
good and that should be all we need then to dynamically create some lists so let's have a look we get asked to enter a command or value so let's say 34 and we can see we've created a new person at the address 980 and if I hit print we've got printing on the screen because I've just realized I've forgotten to actually make the call to the print list function in here so let's just go inside printing here and then uh, print list and send in first to the head of our list sorry about that let's run it again okay so let's type 34 as a new person and now print and now you can see we've got age 34 address AD1980 and the next thing on the list is zero it's null there's nothing else on the list so let's add a few more people to our list and now print and now we've got lots more added to our list and here we can see that we've got 980, the next is 520, the next is 520, 530, 530, 40, etc, etc, etc. In fact, you can see they're all being placed side by side uh, in the memory. And the one at the very end, 34 here, next in line, is 0. Good, so Q then allows me then to clean up all of the items inside my list and free all of the memory. Good, so that's it then for this video. Um, I hope it was clear. It's a really, really big step, but if you've managed to understand this one, then you've really understood all the fund fundamentals you need of how linked lists work. And in the following videos, we'll look at some more of the manipulation, sort of adding to the start, adding in the middle, deleting elements from the list, and all sorts of good stuff like that. So any questions, comments, uh, welcome as always below the video. Otherwise, thanks very, very much for watching and see you in the next one.